Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and Droids across our beloved empire. I know I just got over the Rona, but I got a new sickness. I think a lot of you guys have it too, and that is the Darth Malgus Fever. Ho, ho, ho. Boy, this guy came upon us out of nowhere. And let me tell you, he is taking the Sith Empire to new heights, and this is definitely one of the first conquests in a while. They have people hyped, and they want to do as best they can inside the conquest. Let me tell you. You came to the right place. I got good news, I got some bad news, but I think it's mostly good news. As long as you got a decent amount of roster that's around that four or five million, we're gonna help you get the best crate possible and at least try to get as close as possible. Unlocking him and getting this guy inside of your roster. Let's get over the good and bad news first. What do you guys wanna hear first? Comment down below. You want the bad news first? All right, bad news is, we kind of knew this in advance. Inquisitors are going to have an important part in getting Malgus. But the good news is before you freak out and start telling me it's the end of the world. Trust me. It's just the nature of conquest. There's always a caveat. There's always a catch. But the good news is despite Inquisitors being needed for 39 tickets worth of feats, the good news is you don't need to do all of them. And I think there's going to be ways to cheese your way through victory and doing bare minimum with this lineup here, with teas such as this and some other examples that I'm gonna show you guys today. Now, I've already said this many times before when I was looking over this, it really it breaks my heart that CG has moved away from low star unlocks. I play another similar game that did a, another type of conquest legendary type of unlock and it was a three star unlock and a big chunk of the community free to play, pay to play. We're able to get this legendary conquest unit at three stars. Holy cow, mm, I wish uh, SMGOH Galaxy Heroes would learn a thing or two from other games, but the game point of this game is they try to scare you, fear of missing out, FOMO. Let's try to make sure we don't fall to prone to those tactics. Let's hop on over here. A couple things you need to know. We got to talk about feats, data discs, and I got an absolutely phenomenal resource. And if you guys aren't bookmarking it and aren't getting probably some of the better crates out there, just know the info is out there. Really, the only limiting factor is how big is your roster? It's not so much the Inquisitors. They're going to be gating people behind. So all you got to know, a long story short, is that there are in total 37 feats that you can drop. However, the problem is 39 feet, uh, feet to tickets are associated with the Inquisitors. So that means you have to do something with the Inquisitors out there. And the most obvious one that's coming to my knowledge here is this one in Sector 4, Inflicting Purge 300 times. Now, a majority of you guys probably aren't investing in this team because, well, you can't really even farm the entire faction to get them up running. So some of the feats that require a full team of Inquisitors might be a little difficult. However, with the Purge feat right here, you're getting 10 tickets right there. And the good thing about it is it's only the attempt to infl inflict purge that's thing number one thing number two you don't even need to win the battle so let's say you inflicted i don't know let's say you got 200 purge in one battle but you lost it still counts all of that progress so that's the good thing i think this is probably going to be the sweet spot for many people as i kind of showed if i was going to be someone trying to get through cheese it's probably going to be emperor palpatine with these three inquisitors right i'll explain in a moment and what tambor and probably throwing on some frenzy tech now i got some other options you can look into if this doesn't look like your cup of tea but if you have the frenzy tech you have what tambor trigger one everyone's gonna get a ton of term meter and with these guys right here they all do some pretty nice things with purge that's one of the benefits of the inquisitors before the the, the grand inquisitor comes they apply a ton of debuffs and for example here you're gonna be able to inflict a ton of debuffs on the enemy, putting him in control, deal physical damage to all enemies, inflict accuracy down, burning, all that great stuff. Eh, but let's say you don't want to do it. There's some other Inquisitors that can get the job done. I like that one because at least it buys you time. The cheese throws a lot of debuffs out there to control the enemies. Fifth brother is a no-brainer. And spoiler, if you are going to run a full Inquisitor team uh, inside this conquest before Grand Inquisitor comes out, I, I'm a fan. I say this slightly, but I'm a fan of the this guy leading the Inquisitors because he has a lot of ways to inflict Purge on the enemy but really if you're gonna cheese the cool thing is with the kill is mine it's got a mass buff this spell which is cool one of the cooler kids parts of the inquisitor kids and it inflicts a stack of purge on all the enemies out there that's nice then you got things like the seventh sister for example where she's able to do a lot of assisting whenever another inquisitor's ally used an ability during the turn she assists well what does she do on her basic she's able to inflict purge 
on her basics. So you're gonna have plenty of options to get plenty of purge out there. You don't need to use the 8th brother, but I like the 8th brother for debuff control and keeping the turn meter train going strong. This is the one to highlight. They apply so many debuffs. Chances are, if you can get them going, the enemy's not gonna get a lot of turns. And again, even if you lose the battle, all the attention of the purge application, the attempt, goodness gracious. No, yeah, I speak English. All the attempts towards applying purge, whether it res uh, got resisted or not, is calculated towards it. So this is gonna be the most important thing. You don't need to do all the Inquisitor piece, but you gotta do something. And I think this one's gonna be probably the one that people are probably pushing towards. Other than that, this conquest is like any other conquest for the most part. You're going to need to have a good roster depth. You got to have some older public. You gotta have some characters that play out, steal up. Uh, potency down you got to have some droids for example another thing that probably to keep in mind uh only about roughly 10,000 players have a gear 13 star killer out there you're gonna need to have star killer surviving inside a sector two good news is it's only for two key cards so that's the nice thing you don't need to do it it's a very small part but this is probably going to be probably a bigger gate for most people because at least you have two three star inquisitors in your roster that you can cheese star killer you have more you don't at that point you got to have genos you got to have some galactic republic and you know so it's more roster depth more than anything is going to be your biggest enemy when it comes to pursuing malga so hopefully what i showed you here is going to be one way to get through to the highest crate possible to get malgus and on that note we do have all it's pretty much the same rewards as usual nothing new nothing surprising you're going to get 90 shards per conquest it's going to take three conquests for people to unlock him keep in mind you also got to pick up 20 shards of malgus every time you're doing a run through so that way you get a seven star unlock but if you can try your best to at least shoot for this gold crate here you're going to get 65 let me do some math here. come on over let's do some math real quick here let's say you're not going to go for max because your biggest weakness is roster depth you don't have enough to really do all the funny faction feats that need to be accomplished let's say you go for the second to last great 65 times three that puts you at 195 add another 60 because you're going to go shopping for malgus shards within the various pit stops from sector two to sector five that puts you at 255 you have one other way to get even more malgus shards here now i'm not a fan of the conquest pass plus the thing that monetizes quality of life uh, i've never bought that once However, if you are gonna, if you do, if you're really set on getting as many Malgus shards as possible, the basic premium pass, just the conquest pass, that's $9.99 per cycle of conquest. We've done whaler fails on break on this breakdown before. It's got a $10 value associated. And especially if you need to get the interceptor, solid ship, and you want to get Malgus, you have an option of getting another 20 shards of Malgus or $10 per conquest cycle. So if you come back over to our breakdown, let's say you buy it three times, you're gonna add another 60 in total, 315. So this is putting you, you're not gonna unlock him, but 330 shards is what's needed, but there are plenty of ways to try to get as close as possible. So whenever they do add him to the conquest store a couple months later, you're just, you're knocking at the front door of being able to get Malgus unlocked. So. I'm trying to give you as many resources as possible because Malgus, I'm excited for it. It just breaks my heart that I play other games and seeing how they release things. They don't want to make it accessible for people. It's seven star bus nowadays in Galaxers, and it doesn't have to be based off the experience I've had with other games there. But now let's move into, my gosh, fantastic resource. Massive, huge shout out to the one and only. Oh man, Bit Dynasty. Bit Dynasty is, I, there's a lot of great people out there that uh, focus on things like galactic challenges as well as conquest. This guy right here, if you need a good resource, this is one of many, I consider him to be the spearheader when it comes to making some of the better, uh, best conquest uh, advice out there, mainly because they have a video out right now if you want to kind of get a plan, but this right here is what sells me. They have created a full entire website called SWGOH for Life. It's got 5v5, 3v3 counters, Assault Battles, Galactic Legends, GOTV, Grand Arenas, and all that stuff. But they made a whole entire resource for every single conquest, and they just updated it to help you out. And they have daily plans, for example, showing you what you should be doing on day one, day two, day three, and showing you uh, the progress you should be making. Like, for example, on day one, you want to do two battles of this older public feat right here. You got this one right here, two battles, and it shows you what you're chasing after. You got flawless, health steal, no leader. So that's why they kind of have these weird non-leader things, because they're trying to chase. It shows you the composition, shows you the feats you're going to be striving for within the sector, the battle, as well as the global feats here. And at the end of it, it shows you what your progress should roughly look like. 
within your first day. So again, if you, I, I, I don't use this resource for day-to-day -day planning. I kind of just do my own thing because I have the roster to do whatever I want. But if you're someone that's a, with a more limited roster and you like having a day-to-day -day schedule on what to do exactly, I mean, <laughs> there really isn't going to be a better resource out there. And he also has guides on the variety of feats you're going to have to do. Like, for example, the Grand Victor defeating 500 enemies. Obviously, you're going to use Cup. No. A little bit of a meme, a little bit of a joke. You can use whatever to strive for that. But if you're looking for more serious stuff, for example, it shows you some examples on how to chase after premonition because you're going to need to unlock premonition to do some other feats like we have down here. And then it shows you what team to use with here. And but let's take a look at some of this other stuff here. So sector one feeds again, it gives you a day to day plan. But again, if you want to click on these tabs, it shows you some examples on what you can do. By no means are these the only things, but these are just some examples on things you might have within your roster. Let's hop over to Sector 4, which I said one of the things that are going to be uh, grinding you out of this Malgus uh, push is Inquisitors. I think Purge is going to be the one for people to strive for because you don't need any crazy high gear. A little bit of Frenzy Tech, a little bit of Cheese, the right character to do a lot of Purge. You'll be golden and you don't even have to win. Uh, this is like, I didn't think about this. This is another option on the table. If you have Master Luke, for example, you make him Permatant with Watt Tambor, and then you're also pushing for your Stealth Feet, which is another added bonus. And then you have your buddy over here, the fifth brother, who has that AoE buff to spell with the Purge. So it's mainly just another option. I think the one I suggested, it's you're gonna push out a lot more Purge per battle, but this is just another idea on the table. Again, there's not one way of doing things. There's a lot of ways of doing things out there, and again, the rest is just, man, uh, mind-blowingly important resource now more than ever with important characters that people are excited for. CG, don't let them win. They want you to have that fear of missing out. They want you to feel ticked off. They want you to spend tons of money getting the Inquisitors up. Don't fall for the trap. Inquisitors, yes, they're needed, but by no means are you going to need to max out this team just for Conquest to get Malgus. The big, biggest weakness is the weakness we've been facing in Conquest since they started making it worse. That's having the right amount of roster death. And to end this off, I want to talk about recommended disc. This is honestly what's going to help you out. Uh, so far, there's no indication. Uh, here's the premonition and dread discs that you're going to get through the global feats that are important to get another set of uh, uh, key cards. But this is the core discs. Now, I was looking anywhere, everywhere. I looked through the data mines. Nothing suggests they're taking out data discs. They're adding a couple new ones, which don't seem to be as important as the ones that we've used in the past. Conquest meta has always been tons of debuffs translating to tons of damage via Amplify Agony and then Thermal Exhaust leading to tons of Thermal Detonators and the enemies are just going to kill themselves off with all the Thermal Detonators piling up. So if I were you, try your best to find things like Amplify Agony. You're going to be applying a ton of debuffs and you're going to kill them all faster. Thermal Exhaust, so as you're applying debuffs, they're going to get tons of stacks of Thermal Detonators and they'll go poof! They'll magically disappear. And I also love Ability Exhaust because as you're applying those debuffs, they're going to get Ability Block. They won't be able to use any special abilities. And you got other things, for example, Volatile Accelerator, applying damage over time to the enemy, which translates to more Thermal Exhaust, lots of Amplify Agony doing uh, HD debuff doing 6.63% max health damage. And then you got things like Caustic Emissions, where as the enemy takes more turns, they're going to get more Thermal Detonators on them because they're applying damage over time on them so this right here besides getting your daily game plan what feats to chase after you really want to strive for some combination of thermal exhaust amplify agony at the very minimum and they suggest some other data discs that are nice but for the most part you're really going to want to be striving for this especially if you're going with low gear inquisitors you want to try to get the most bang out of buck out of these guys and these guys are going to do it so please 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 subscribe to bit dynasty if you want to have a fantastic conquest resource they do some other stuff and <laughs> if you're not getting max crate and you didn't have this bookmark you got no one to blame but yourself this resource is gonna be pivotal uh, dare i say mandatory for people with limited rosters that want to push as far as possible and man get some juicy malga shards seems like a big deal seems like a mini galactic legend almost i think that's the deal that they're gonna try to strive with this guy here so let me know down below how you feel about this conquest i don't think it's the end of the world i think we've had worse conquests in the past that were more grindy yeah there's a lot of inquisitor stuff out there but you don't need to do all of them i don't think that's going to be pushing you out of malgus it's going to be some of the other stuff roster death is going to be your main enemy but hopefully with the resources i provide some tips i've got things from for example bit dynasty we're giving you the resources to dominate the next three conquests that are Malgus-focused 
And then by June, hopefully, I'm gonna see a lot of people say, man, I got so close, I'm only a few shards short, and that's gonna be a success in my book. Yes, I would love to have more three-star, five-star unlocks, but we're playing the wrong game, if that's the dream you wanna live in. Leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, so you're not missing a thing. And more importantly, always remember that it's great to be in the Empire today.